Welcome to the X City Plus podcast, where we ask journalists who are killing it in their fields the who, what, why, where, and when of their careers. On today's episode, we're chatting with Claire Ricasso Brown, investigative journalist who exposed the 1MDB Malaysia corruption scandal. When did you realize you wanted to be a journalist? I'm not one of those people that always wanted to be a journalist. I, I think the profession found me. Um, I, I had a certain outlook in life. I was very interested in the world, why it went the way it did, why it worked the way it did. Um, I had a strong concern about many issues that I felt people weren't covering enough. I, I did a lot of studies. I did uh, further studies in international relations. But I hadn't thought about becoming a journalist um, until, you know, I was desperately looking for a job and, and something I might be interested in starting at the bottom and working up. And, and then I suddenly realized that maybe I would like to try and get a job, uh, you know, in a, in a very low position at the BBC, because that would be a really interesting place. <laughs> and maybe I could, uh, I could get a, a higher job. So, you know, that was, that was how I got drawn in as a young person. I guess I found it was something that was interesting. Okay, so did you study it or did you just like learn on the spot? No, in those days you didn't study journalism. Um, you, so you did a degree, a regular degree, and then you applied to get a job. So actually, actually, I'll be, I'll tell you my secret. I pretended that I had no qualifications because I, I had to get a very junior job and I didn't want them to know that I was actually a lot better qualified. <laughs> so <laughs> it's so easier. <laughs> I came in and I came at the very bottom as, a, as a, a temporary secretary and I thought this is my chance I need to impress somebody and stay and I managed to do that. Great, <laughs> impressive <laughs> and uh, when you were starting out who was your biggest journalism inspiration someone who really helped you or motivated you? I think it was it was working in an institution like the BBC where you know I was the I was the coffee maker to begin with um, and seeing how it worked and the ideals of the people working in a state funded institution that was there for the very strong sense of being there for the public benefit for being uh, for you having a having a um, a remit you know in the public interest for objectivity putting the uh, freedoms and liberties um, of the public first. Um, so rather than it being uh, one person who inspired me, it was an institution. Um, it was an honorable institution with people who had, you know, uh, uh, the interest of the members of the public first. Um, they were challenging authority on behalf of the public. All those ideals, I think, were what you know, um, I, I found very valuable and taught me my outlook as a journalist. What's your biggest piece of advice you would give to a young journalist starting out in the business? Well, um, you know, um, I, I think only only a few journalists are going into, into this uh, profession um, because they want to be rich and famous. But <laughs> obviously, obviously, quite a lot of them, there is that sense of maybe I could become, you know, rich and famous. But um, I, I think it's the sense of being, of, of, of having an opportunity to do something really important for your community. Um, it is so important that we have um, information coming through uh, to the public about what's really going on. Um, and we need those, we need those members, our, you know, in our community whose jobs it is to identify important issues that may be not being addressed, but affect us all. And my advice is always remember who you're working for. You should be in, in your heart, in your spirit, in your mind, working for the public interest against uh, against attacks on the wider public interest. So you might be working for an organization that might be owned or run, owned by a rich individual or for by an interest group. Try to remember that it is the public who to whom your loyalty should always be uh, first and foremost. Right. Yes, often, often as a journalist, you find you if you're doing the right stories, 
uh, you find yourself up against very powerful, very wealthy and influential people who can make your life very hard and they'll target you. Um, and um, sometimes, you, you know, you need to remember that, uh, you know, not to be intimidated by such characters because you represent the public interest. You represent millions of people there, you know, um, against whoever this powerful force that you may be um, writing about or disturbing or, or finding pushback um from so um th that uh, you know that that helps i think the individual journalists to 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 remember that they're not alone sometimes you feel very alone but mm. actually you're standing up for the truth you're standing up for the wider public um and you are asking questions on their behalf so you know if you take your job, job seriously if you do it honorably um and truthfully and and based on the facts then you can also do it with um the confidence that you may just be one small person asking a very powerful institution a question, but you're doing it in the public interest. Yeah, of course. And, and that, that gives you a lot of power that you may not necessarily um, superficially have. Yeah. And so your field being in investigative journalism, what is the thing you prefer in your field? Well, I've, I've followed stories that I think, uh, you know, are very important um, in our in our period of time you know you 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 look around you think well you know this is my this is my era this is my time you, there will be issues in your time and uh you you so you you address them um often i found when i was working for you know decades in mainstream media that that a lot of the issues that i that i didn't think you know that that i thought were most important Uh, were not being covered by those uh, mainstream media organizations and, and the reasons, um, you know, can be manifold, um, uh, you know, um, most of our mainstream media is controlled by interests uh, which benefit from the offshore finance system, for example. It mm. helps them avoid. It helps uh, the owners avoid tax, <laughs> um, and so therefore a very very big issue. Um, the you know the, the the major concerns about the finance the offshore finance uh, system have, have not been addressed, and I think that's one of the reasons. So when I left mainstream media and I and I took the opportunity of of new media to start up on my own, really after having retired as a um, as a uh, salaried journalist. I, I felt uh, liberated to cover some of the issues I felt were most important from, from when I was very young. Um, you know, I always, perhaps the, the issue that attracted me most into journalism in the end was, was the environment, the environment of uh, the Borneo rainforest in particular, where I had grown up. I knew that deforestation was, was rampant in the 80s um, when I started out in my career, and I was very concerned about that issue. Mainstream media never touched it. Uh, they just weren't looking at these issues. Um, so individual journalists, when they get the chance, um, you know, need to champion, identify and champion the issues that are re of lasting significance and, and attempt to, um, you know, attempt to, to cover them and to persuade their organizations to cover these issues. It's, it can be hard. Mm. Um, if, you're, if you're tackling a very difficult story, um, you know, one where, uh, for example, um, the 1MDB scandal, which I was working on. Um, sometimes you can feel very isolated. Uh, you feel you have no power. Um, all the power is with uh, the people who are trying to, uh, you know, um, uh, attack you back, uh, vilify you, uh, hack you, follow you, um, issue lawsuits against you, have you arrested. Um, you know, particularly if you're a journalist working in a in an oppressive country, um, you you can be feel very very uh, vulnerable. But of course, your great weapon, and this was what I found with One MDB, um, is the truth. If you have the truth on your side, you can put a very very powerful institution, uh, very very powerful politicians um, in a very difficult place, and and you you start to be the one with with the control. That's mm -hmm. what I found with 1MDB, you know. Um, banks were closed down, a prime minister lost his job. Um, they all thought they were so powerful that one small person couldn't, uh, couldn't topple them. But when you have the truth, you have great power. Yeah, exactly. And now with the evolution of media on social media and uh, people being much more of, you know, 
uh, individual journalists. How, how do you think the investigative journalism is going to evolve through the years? Yes, it's a very difficult balance, isn't it? With every bit of progress, there is a problem. And it's always striking the right balance. And of course, we're all finding this with new media, aren't we? Uh, you know, the, the, the platform that enables the truth teller to spread the truth is also the platform that is used by the liar and the abuser to mislead people and to attack the truth tellers. So, um, you know, getting the balance correct is, is very difficult. Um, and, um, you know, new media is, has been a huge uh, step forward. Uh, enabling uh, journalists to, um, uh, you know, to reach much further than they would have done before. So what we what we found ourselves with is this citizens journalism that that emerges with with the new media. Um, and again, there's a plus and there's a minus. Um, for me, I was a you know, I was a journalist who'd worked within the confines, the constraints, the training of established media organizations. So I had a lot of experience, you know, on how to how to be careful about how you handled things, how to write um, as factually as possible, not to make mistakes and, and say things that were incorrect. It's a discipline you learn uh, and you practice in mainstream organizations. But I also was very liberated by new media. I was able to do stories as I've described that most big organizations will not do for many reasons. Um, you know, they don't want to cross the powerful. They don't want to, to spend the money on, on dealing with lots of lawsuits. They prefer to go for easier stories. So on the other hand, it gives everyone a chance to do the same thing. And, um, you know, uh, those people who set themselves up as citizens journalists who have not had the training that you're now having um, it, as uh, you know in journalism uh, through uh, centers of learning or the training that comes with having practiced the job for a long time um, you know you're getting less responsible journalism you're getting less maybe um, uh, believable journalism and it's hard for um, obviously the the person who's trying to resource uh, information from these these uh, outlets to distinguish between, you know, a solid piece of journalism that's come from a, a blog and one that is likely to be less trustworthy. Mm. Um, I have great confidence in the um, discernment of most people. You know, most people, you, they may get taken in once, they may get carried away, but they, they learn. You get vaccinated by fake news, I think. You start to, you start to um, dis, you know, discover your own critical, um, you know, thinking on this. Um, but it's still a problem, as we've seen. We've seen terrible problems in the United States with, you know, cult media, uh, you know, um, beginning to just take over the, you know, the lives and perceptions of huge numbers of people. Mm. So it's a plus and minus situation. And I hope that um, as a, you know, that we, as, you know, as a, as a world population will we'll start to become more discriminating in, in how we use, uh, uh, you know, online media. Yeah, sure. It's, it's a question of balance, basically, I think. To... Yeah, yeah, I don't think, I, I, I'm scared of trying to legislate this. Yeah, it's, yeah, because it's all because... the problems. <laughs> I've had, uh, you know, I have been a big victim of fake news myself, mm. you know, I, I know how pernicious it is, but, you know, any rules that were brought in to stop it would actually prevent me telling the truth yeah. more than it would prevent someone who's got a lot of money from passing fake news. Yeah, of course. So I, I, I don't see legislation as a, as a solution. Of course. Thank you so much. <laughs> Thank you, Eva, and good luck with it. Have a good day. Bye.